So you can see though, this is kind of uniform. It looks like a texture, uh, which doesn't look that real. So what we usually do is we break it up. We break it up so that our eyes don't see order. It really looks unrealistic when our eyes can find patterns and your eye will kind of quickly find patterns in this where the texture is repeating. This one is a little better than others would be. It's not as obvious, but it really is a key to realism to just break it up a bit. There's a few ways to do it, uh, but the way we're going to do it right now is use noise. First of all, we have to add in the noise. So shift A, search. We're going to search for a noise and we're going to choose the noise texture. Now, in the shader editor, we've got our material output here, which is always going to have the surface, which is going to be whatever shader it's going to show. But uh, we can also just put in anything at any point. So we could just put this in and we could see what our noise looks like. Now there's also a quick way to do that in Blender uh, when we've turned on the Node Wrangler, which is just control shift and then click here and it will automatically create a viewer node, which basically just then pumps into the surface output. It's super useful to really get a sense of what we're doing. Now what we're gonna do is create a mask. Uh, we're going to do a mix RGB, which is just gonna take two RGB inputs and an RGB input just being our texture. So we can take two textures in, mix them by either an op any operation here that you would expect in the likes of Photoshop, which could be add, which would add the pixels of one on top of the pixel values of the other. But what we're gonna be doing is using the fa changing the factor to a noise texture. And what that will do, whenever we pump in an image into the factor here, it's going to use the white and black values to map out whatever inputs we put into here. So just to show what that would look like, if we change this one to blue and this one to red, and I'm gonna control shift click here, you can see we're kind of getting this mix of blue and red. Now to make it, we're, we're, we're not gonna, we're gonna want areas where there's just full red and full blue in this example, which, which is what we're doing for breaking up our textures, because we don't want it to be blend of both textures all the way through. We want to have hard areas where there's just one texture and then hard areas where it's just another. So in this example here, we, we'd want to see big patches of blue, little bits in between that then go into big patches of red. So I'm going to add in a ramp here. Uh, this is a useful tool. We have color ramps. So this color ramp is what we're going to use to change this a little bit. So if I control shift click here, you're gonna see what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna bring in this black value here, which is going to see here, watch this. Now watch how that area turns into a thick black solid color. That's what we're looking for. And then if we do the same with the white, these white areas are gonna turn into thick solid white areas. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, if I put this as the mask for the here, control shift click here, you can see what we're doing here as well. So we're getting now thick patches of blue and I'm pulling this in, we're getting thick patches of red. Excellent. So this is what we're gonna to use to break up this texture. Now we can also change the noise value here to add a bit of detail and roughness in. Uh, so we can choose the scale of the noise. We might go for something like this. And now we can choose the detail, which is gonna add detail on the edges. A bit of roughness, well, not, it's not roughness, it's kind of detail. Uh, the roughness value will kind of break it up a little bit more. And we might go for something like this for just now. There's also a distortion value here, which is gets a bit trippy and psychedelic when you're looking at it like this. We're not gonna to touch it for now. That's kind of useful. We'll be using it later for water. Um, but for now, uh, we're just going for something like this. So hopefully you understand there what's happening here. And we can also change these values at any point that we want. But hopefully you get a sense for what's going on there. Now, instead of doing blue and red, we're going to take the texture in. So we're gonna just put the texture in twice here, which is going to do nothing, but we're going to change one of these. We're gonna make one darker. So to do that, I'm going to add a curves node and put that in between here. 
We have the same texture going into the mix factor here, but one of them has a curves operation. So what we can do with this curves operation here is darken or lighten it. And we can do that by taking the midpoint and lowering it or raising it. So if we lower it, you can see we get dark patches. If we raise it, we'll get lighter patches. Let's go for darker patches. We'll just lower it kind of like this. And then we can play around with this slider on the ramp to blend it in a little bit more. We might just play around with it to get something like that. So now you can see this is kind of really broken it up a bit, added some noise to the whole texture. It makes it a little bit more random for our eyes and breaks up the pattern. Yeah, because we're making this a uh, 3D kind of diorama, uh, you'll notice when you when you see a lot of them, at the side you'll see rocks and dirt, like as, as though this has just been a cut out of the ground and pulled up. So we're gonna do that now. We've got one object, how do we tell Blender that we want one material to show in one place and one material to show in another, in another place. So, uh, tabbing to edit mode and I'm going to add more lines into this so that we can define some areas with polygons. So I'm gonna press Control R and I wanna move this to where I would want dirt to go down to. So maybe I want dirt to kind of go down to here. I'm gonna move this one up just a little bit because um, I'm gonna want the grass texture to stay to about there. All right, so I'm gonna press three, hold alt and click on a line. Uh, it's hard to see the lines now. Let's just turn that there. Click on one of these lines and hold alt and I'm gonna select this loop. I'm gonna go over to my materials and you can see we've got our forest ground material there. We're gonna make a new one and click new there. We're gonna call this mud. I guess it could be dirt, whatever you want to call it. And then with this selected here, that loop is selected. I'm going to click assign. And even for now, let's just maybe make the mud brown so that we can see what this looks like. So you can see there, we've now got uh, what I could use as a mud layer there. Okay, for the rest of them, I am going to select them again using Alt and clicking on the edge loop. I'm going to make a new material again, and then this one, I don't know, uh, rock. And then this layer will be kind of a, a rocky layer. So now let's uh, source some textures for that. Let's go back to Polyhaven. Um, let's search mud. Okay, cool, we got a few useful ones here. Uh, dry, yeah, it doesn't matter, because we can make it wet if we want. All right, we'll download that one. And um, whilst we're here, we'll get a stone rocky one as well. Rock, rock ground. Ooh, this, this looks good. Let's take this one. So that's rock ground six I'm taking there. Okay, let's do the mud first. So I'm gonna go click on the mud here, make sure I've got that selected up over there. Uh, Control shift T, go to my mud textures, load them in. And you will see, it doesn't look very good. That's because we haven't UV mapped this. So let's go to UV editing. Actually, let's load in the rock one first while we're here. Rock, control shift T. I'm gonna load in the rock textures, load them in. All right, let's go to UV editing now. I'll t change the viewport shading to show textures. And we will select the side, the sides. So I'm going to, okay. I'm going to, I've got all those selected now and I'm gonna press U for unwrap and we are just gonna use a cube projection. I'm sure that will work. Yes, good. Now we could change the scale of the textures by doing the UVs, but I am going to use the shading. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it with the shader. So I've got my rock one here, we're on rock. I'm gonna add in again, a value node here. Just pump it into the scale. And change the scale to something that works. So let's rotate that around maybe 90 degrees so that's kind of going that way. Now for this one, I'm going to again, break it up with a noise texture. So let's add noise texture. Yeah, let's instead, we're gonna do what we did before, 
But instead of, I'm gonna, we don't need the place, this displacement there for now. Instead of mixing textures, we're going to mix a shader using the noise. So instead of using a mix RGB, we're going to add a mix shader. So search, mix, shader. And it's gonna do exactly the same as what we did before. We were, we were mixing two different colors or textures, but instead it's going to mix two different shaders. So we could load in a different rock material. Actually, we're gonna load in another rock material. Let's choose rock boulder dry, I guess. Well, yeah. So I can make another principal BSDF. This is the shader here. So I'm gonna press shift D, make a duplicate, and then same again, control shift T, uh, load in the other one, which is a rock boulder. Load that in. Here we go, that's different. Uh, again, value node here to change the scale. Set that to one so it won't change. And then we can just play around with it. Maybe something like that. Okay, and now we are, we don't need to worry about the displacement because we're not worrying about it. Uh, let's take the noise texture. Again, we'll take a ramp pump the noise into the ramp and then the noise into the factory here. And now we're gonna put the two shaders into this mix shader. So we'll take this shader and then we'll take this shader and then we'll pump that into the output. And every time you do something like this, uh, the shaders will need to compile, which just means it's Blender is figuring it out so it can view them. And now you can see this will give us kind of a bit of a Again, breaking it up, making it look a little bit more natural. So another thing here, if I just control shift click here, you'll see this uh, is actually a little bit squashed on the Z axis, the, uh, the vertical axis. So we actually need to add a mapping no uh, node to our noise texture. Uh, we can just do that by clicking here and pressing control T and it will automatically make a um, mapping nodes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select UV. So it's gonna use the same, essentially the same as what these textures are doing. These textures have mapping nodes to tell Blender where we wanna show the image on the object. And we're gonna change it to UV for this noise texture as well. So it's gonna be uniform across without being squished. Uh, so we'll break it up with some detail. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it looks broken up. We can even change kind of how much we want one to show and how much we want another to show. Uh, maybe something like this. Let's change the mud. So I've just selected the mud over here. Uh, add in the value node again. Just change the scale. Maybe something like that for just there. We will also do the same, break it up a bit. So we'll do that with noise, noise texture, into a ramp. You'll, once you get into shading, you'll be using noise textures and color ramps quite a lot. So uh, do get used to them. You search, mix RGB, take that as a factor, put them both into here. And we'll do the same again, where we'll take a curves modifier, a node, uh, put that in between here and darken one of them. But we need to make sure we pump that into the base color here, like so. Let's change that a bit. We'll also need to do the same, uh, control T and make sure we use the UV as the mapping. And we've got it there. Just to make sure it is broken up a little. So maybe I don't wanna to be too extreme, just subtle. Okay, so I guess the, the way this is coming down into here is uh, we want it to be a little bit more random. We don't want it to just have a hard line. So I'm going to so random, well, let's see how we do this. I'm going to randomly select vertices along this axis here. Just holding shift and clicking. Oh, this has gone off again. 
holding shift and clicking across. Then I'm going to turn on proportional editing again, but I'm going to change it to random. Uh, so it's going to move vertices close to the um, vertices I selected, but do them in a random motion as opposed to a smooth fall off. So go press G, Z, change the scale a bit. And yeah, maybe we don't want the scale to be too much because we're just kind of caring about the edges here. Although a little bit of randomness to everything isn't too bad. Maybe I will do that. So it's just scrolled up. Just the tiniest bit. Um, I'm going to re-straighten the bottom one, holding Alt there. S C. Whoa. Turn off. Turn off proportional editing. S C zero. And just make sure that that bottom area is still flat. And then when it smooths out, we barely even notice. So yeah, uh, let's see. Would it make a difference? Yeah. So I guess I could take my time. Um, when I move these vertices here, don't press G um, because it will drag the texture around. What you want to do is double tap G, and when you double tap G, it protects the UV map. But really, I could spend a bit of time just, you know, making this a little bit more random. Um, just so it doesn't look so uniform. because the rock wouldn't really just be uh, perfectly straight. So double tapping G going along here and just kind of trying to break up that line. Looks a little bit better. A little bit more realistic if you could somehow pull a chunk of earth from the ground. Okay, that's a little bit better. 